This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Chelsea. Chelsea is a champion surfer, so she's accustomed to moving super fast, which is why she relies on super fast broadband brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her family sharing and surfing and saving each month. Combined, she bundles her Flow mobile, home phone, and TV services so she can enjoy much more for much less, and so can you. Visit any Flow retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994, or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today Afternoon News Update for Wednesday, March 9. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. There are calls for the principal of Combermere School, Vera Paris, to step down over the ongoing problems at that institution. Senior teacher Reverend Charles Morris says he's fed up with the situation and he's calling on the Ministry of Education to intervene. Classes ended early yesterday and it was the second time in a week that the school was being closed due to environmental concerns. Morris claims the majority of teachers have lost confidence in the principal. The umbrella bargaining body for trade unions says it will press ahead with demands for wage and salary increases. The statement from the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations follows Finance Minister Chris Sinclair's presentation of the 2016-2017 estimates of revenue and expenditure in Parliament yesterday. There appears to be no provision for the pay increases in the package, but the General Secretary of c 2 sab Dennis DePisa, tells Barbados Today the organization will be pursuing negotiations for increases to the fullest extent. If he has not, the, the, the government here proposes, and uh, that will be forthcoming. Obviously, when we sit down and have it, um, we are all sensitive in the consideration, but we have not gone to that point as yet. So, uh, but we will do anything to pursue the package. Meanwhile, the head of the Unity Workers Union, Caswell Franklin, is taking issue with the amount of funds allocated to the Defence Force. He says this is draining the public purse. The truth is that the war crack heads and shoot people, so they put more money in the Based on the estimates, it does not appear that public officers will receive a pay increase this year. A statement from the Ministry of Finance says although wages and salaries are expected to increase by 2.4 percent, the change is mainly due to provisions made for payments of outstanding increments. A draft national policy on gender affairs will be submitted to Cabinet by the end of this month. The Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Social Care, Janet Phillips, says it will serve as a guide to national planning. Phillips was addressing the Bureau's celebrations of International Women's Day yesterday. We celebrate the completion of a national policy on gender, which will shortly be submitted to the Cabinet. It goes by the end of this month. This is a guiding framework through which gender perspectives are being brought to the forefront of national planning in order to advance the development for all. As we celebrate our achievements, we acknowledge that there can be no real sustainable development where half of the population is left behind. In celebrating 50 years of gender and development, Barbados will be given the opportunity to select 10 persons who will be honored for their contributions to the development of gender equality and social justice over the past 50 years. Sports Minister Stephen Lashley says more than 70 sporting facilities have been identified for maintenance work and his ministry is currently reviewing a maintenance policy put forward by the National Sports Council. Lashley was speaking during debate on a resolution for government's acquisition of land in Brighton, St. George. He says a number of the facilities had been vandalized over the years and need to be rebuilt. He noted, however, that the new maintenance policy will address a number of areas, including fertilization of fields, field repairs and pitch management. West Indies T20 captain Darren Sammy says he is depending on replacement players to step up when they begin their campaign in the World T20 tournament next week. Carlos Brathwaite, Ashley Nurse and Evan Lewis were called up after Kyron Pollard, Sunil Narine, Darren Bravo and Lendell Simmons pulled out of the squad. Pollard and Simmons withdrew because of injury, and Narayan says he needs more time to work on his action. 
Bravo, meanwhile, was chosen to play for Trinidad and Tobago's Red Force in the regional four-day championship. West Indies are currently number two in the ICC rankings and are considered favorites to win the tournament. We, we in it to win it. That's what I can tell you. Um, uh, we've landed here and all our focus is solely on, on doing whatever we can, uh, whether it's practicing, whether it's planning, uh, and when the plane comes, uh, we'll be geared towards, towards winning. Um, it's been a massive uh, motivation for us to see our youngsters um, doing well in Bangladesh. So, um, yeah, what any nation, once uh, your team is in a, your country is being represented in a major event, you know, once you win, it elevates the, the, the country, the nation, well, for us, the region. And uh, we all know cricket is the glue that unifies the, the Caribbean. So once the team, whichever Caribbean team does well, you know, it's always a massive plus for, for the Caribbean people. There's regional and international news after this short break. These papers ain't selling at all, at all. Get your paper, get your paper. Only 225, get your paper. Get your paper, miss. No, take it, take it, I can pay for it. Barbados today, all the way. <laughs> Barbados today, news you can trust. In news from the region, Trinidad's President Anthony Carmona says he is upset at attempts to sell the country's highest national award, the Order of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, on the website eBay. A statement from Carmona's office says the award is sacrosanct and not a disposable ragdoll. He added that the intended sale of the medal offends the sense of patriotism and exposes a raw nerve. And finally, Macedonia says it will no longer let any migrants through its borders with Greece. The decision came after Slovenia barred access to migrants using the country as a transit point. Croatia and Serbia later announced a similar position. Some 13,000 migrants are now stranded at the Macedonia-Greece border. The move comes after the EU and Turkey set out a plan to ease Europe's biggest refugee crisis since World War II. It's starting to dawn on people, I think, that the gate isn't opening any time soon. In fact, we're standing right before it. This is the Macedonian checkpoint. You might be able to see just through the railings there the Macedonian army. Uh, we see people coming up to the gate, making desperate appeals. We've just seen a man going up with his child and asking them to open it. But uh, no sign they're going to do that any time soon. And in fact, we've had word from the police on the opposite side that it will remain closed. But through here, if we just peek into the departure tent, as we might call it, here are the next 50 who are waiting to go through and they've been waiting there since Monday morning pretty squalid inside but they're not going to move in case they miss the very thin chance that the gate reopens and just to show you the camp around here you might be able to see that it's looking pretty dismal today the rubbish is beginning to pile up the rain is falling again and yet there is this sort of semi-permanent feel to the camp so people are digging trenches around their tents so the water doesn't get in there are little businesses starting up we've seen barbers today we've seen Syrians selling on food and produce from the Greek side and we've seen a few tears as well but these people have endured so much so far and they're not going to leave this camp when there is just the slimmest chance they can get into Macedonia. And that's the news and sports. For the very latest, you can visit our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. Remember, you can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. We're also on Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marika Williams. Good afternoon.